Hi guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to assemble my dragon lantern for the Lunar New Year. There's actually multiple lanterns you can make with this design because the lantern is made of these panels and in the dragon lantern set there are two panels, the dragon panel and the Chinese knot panel. I plan on designing more panels for each animal of the Chinese zodiac, so if you're watching this in the future and you have a different animal panel, you can create even more combinations with your panels. For the dragon set, you can use both panels to create this lantern, which I will be doing in this tutorial. Or you can use just the dragon panels like this, or just the knot panels like this. It doesn't matter which combination you choose, all panels are the exact same size, so you can follow this tutorial for all panel combinations. If you don't know already, I actually have two other Chinese lanterns in my design collection, both of which you can actually put tea lights into, as you can see here. For this dragon lantern, you could maybe leave the cutout designs open with no back panel and then squeeze a tea light in there if you really wanted it to be a true lantern. But just FYI, I designed this one to be more of a lantern in the decorative sense. So I'm just going to create one with the cutouts closed off. Finish size is about 6 to 7 inches wide and about 11 inches long with the tassel. Before we begin the assembly, I just want to talk about the gold paper I used for my lantern. My all-time favorite gold paper is this Kodama cardstock paper. I use it in all my designs. However, for this one, the Kodama is thicker than what we need, and while thicker is normally a good thing with paper crafts, in this case it really isn't. And the reason is we will be putting the gold paper behind this panel, which will then be curved like this. And this curve puts some tension on that gold paper. With normal paper, this would not be a problem, but the issue here is I don't know how well this gold mirror surface will hold up with glue. So I went on a search for text weight gold paper and I found this pretty origami paper. The only issue is it's very pricey at over a dollar a sheet. I'll link it below for anyone who may want to use it, but you're going to need at least six sheets for this lantern, so I don't know if it's worth it, but you can see it's quite comparable to the Kodama, and it has this pretty red backing. The next one I found is this paper, which is also an origami paper, but it's much less expensive, and you get quite a bit of it in each pack. It's more of a true gold in the sense that it resembles 24 karat gold jewelry. You know that really yellow gold. Here it is compared to the Kodama. Some people may be put off by that, but here's a lantern I made with it. Honestly, I think this gold screams Chinese culture because culturally it's common to give 24 karat gold jewelry to brides at weddings. So if you're going for authentic, this is a good paper to use. And finally, I settled on this gold paper. This one you can see doesn't have the shine of the Kodama or the origami paper, but it's still quite pretty. This one won out for me in the end because it's available in 8.5 by 11 inch paper. You can see the origami gold is a lot smaller. And here is the lantern I made using this paper. You get a lot of sheets in one pack. I think it's 100 sheets and the price isn't bad. You will find links to all the gold paper I talk about here, including the thicker Kodama if you want to try using that. Honestly, I do think it's the prettiest one out of all the ones I've shown you. Now, since I just mentioned paper size differences between the gold paper, let's talk about this gold accent on the lantern. Because of the varying gold paper that's available out there, I wanted you all to have a good range of options on which paper you use without my design limiting you. So for this accent piece here, this is the full piece which attaches like this, but I've also included a second version of it where it's cut into two parts so that you can use these smaller sized origami paper if you wanted to. This sheet is about 6 inches by 6 inches, and here you can see the two smaller parts can be easily cut out of this. And I'll show you later in this video how these will attach to your lantern, but I wanted to explain why you see these short and long pieces in your file. And now let me go over with you what you will see in that file you download. When you open the main folder, you will see two more folders labeled like this. These two versions are mainly for Cricut or Design Space users. As is obvious from the names, if you have a scoring tool, you will use the files in this folder labeled Yes Scoring Tool. And if you do not have a scoring tool, then you will be using the files in this folder labeled No Scoring Tool. 
the files in the Yes Scoring Tool folder will create fold lines like this. And the files in the No Scoring Tool folder will create fold lines like this with these small dashes cut out. If you use a different machine than the Cricut and you do not have a scoring tool, I recommend using the files in the No Scoring Tool folder. If you do have a scoring tool, I would love to know how your machine handles dash lines for scoring. Do you have to change them like with Design Space? Please, if anyone can comment below on that, I would really like to know more about this with other machines. I do have a full video that goes into more detail about fold lines that I'll link below. And if you're new to the Cricut machine, I encourage you to watch it because it'll walk you through how to prepare your file if you're using a scoring tool. So once you choose the file you're going to use and you open up your folder, you will see three more folders and one PDF file like this. This looks chaotic, but you really just need to look at either this side or this side, depending on which folder you use. So you'll see in the folder that I've separated the lantern into three parts, the panels, the spine, and the accents. And just to quickly give you a visual, these are the panels. This is the spine, which hold the panels together. And then this gold trim along with the tassel are the accents. Now you'll also notice there is also a PDF file in the folder. And if you open that up, you'll see this. This PDF is in the Yes Scoring Tool folder. And if you open up the one in the No Scoring Tool folder, you'll see this one. Both are the exact same information, just colored differently. These PDFs are purely informational. You will not be using this file for cutting. This just tells you the parts you will see in each of these folders and how many pieces to cut for each part. So here in the panels folder, you will see these pieces. I mentioned the dragon and the Chinese knot panels earlier. You can use whichever panels you want as long as you cut a total of six panels. This piece is the backing for these panels, so you'll also need six of them. And in this file, which is from the spine folder, you will see these pieces. These will make up the spine I showed you earlier. For these, you will need four of this piece and one each of these pieces. And in this last file, which is from the accents folder, you will see these pieces. I showed you these pieces when I talked about the gold paper. These two shorter pieces are essentially this piece here broken up into two parts. So if your gold paper is smaller than eight and a half by 11, you can cut out these two pieces and you will need two of each, so four pieces in total. And if your gold paper is eight and a half by 11 or larger, you can just use this full size piece and you will cut two of them. And for the tassel and string, you'll need one of each, but you do have the option of cutting two tassels and gluing them together just for a different look, which I'll show you when we assemble. And that's it for the boring part. I know my videos can be tedious for those of you who are experienced crafters, but I do get a number of customers who are new to cutting machines and it can be very frustrating not knowing where to start with these projects. So I like to do my part in minimizing that frustration. So here are my pieces cut out for my lantern. These are my six panels. I cut all my red pieces out together, so here are the pieces for the spine, plus the string that will hold my tassel. And here are my gold pieces. These are the six backings for my panels. And these are my tassels. And for my accent piece, I've cut one in full size and one in the split size, just so I can show you how to attach them both. For materials for this project, you will need some double-sided tape and glue. I also included a small paintbrush here because it helps with applying your glue, but if your glue bottle has a small enough tip, you can probably get away with not using a paintbrush. So the very first step is to glue the backings onto all six panels. Here I'm starting with my Chinese knot panel, and the only tip I have here is to make sure to cover all the areas around the design, especially the edges. And once you have that covered, take your backing piece and just quickly lay it over the panel to get an idea of where it'll sit. Then place glue around the edge of the whole oval. The top and bottom has more empty space, so I'm spreading my glue over a larger area in these spots. Then along the sides, I keep my glue to a slim line along the edge.
then flip it over and place it on top of your panel, making sure the edges sit inside the panel. And press down to secure. I have a roller I can use, but you can just use the palm of your hand. And as you can see here, you will get some glue bleeding out. That will dry clear so it won't be a problem, but if you have a large amount of glue seeping out, just wipe it off and then use less glue for your other panels. Now for the dragon panel, you'll need to decide which way you want the dragon's head to point. Here I want my dragon head to point to the left, so I'm flipping it over to apply my glue. And remember again to make sure you're, you glue all parts around the cutouts. It's especially important here where you have spots like this that will stick out if you don't glue it down. And make sure you cover the area around the dragon as well. Then glue your backing on. And while you're letting your panels dry, keep checking on them to make sure none of the parts are coming unglued. Use your fingers and just gently press down all around. If you look at the finished lantern, these panels will be curved so that puts some force on some of the edges to lift. So it's really important to not only make sure they're glued down, but also that these pieces are completely dried before moving on to the next step. Once you have your six panels done, set them aside to let them dry completely. And while you're waiting, you can move on to make the spine. Now for the spine, we're going to start with these two pieces. These pieces will make up this top part and the bottom part on the final lantern. And starting with this piece, holding it like this, you're going to first create all your folds like this. Then place a piece of tape on the tab at the end and attach the other end to it. Now this part is going to be where you hang string from so you can actually also attach it like this but that will create this triangle which I'm not a fan of. I know it's a small detail, I just prefer the look of the hanging loop in this position. So to attach them together, we're going to use glue on this part. And if you just bring these together like this and make sure these folds sit flush against each other. Next with this piece, we're going to do the same thing. Holding it with the tab on the left, make all your folds like this. Then again, like the last piece, put a piece of tape on the tab and bring the other end over to attach them together. And now we're going to glue these parts together just like the last piece. But for this one, you do not have a choice of which way these guys hang. For this piece, they need to hang on the same side as the frills. Okay. 
And here for a visual, as you can see, we will be hanging our tassel from this end. And next we're going to work on these four strips. You'll notice these strips have these fold lines on each end. You will not be folding any of these lines. These are going to be our guides on where to attach these strips to the other pieces. So first thing is to place double sided tape on each end of these strips in that space between the fold lines and the strip ends. And you want to do this with all four strips. And now we can take those last two pieces we made and attach these strips to them to finish off our spine. And to do this, take one strip and remove the tape backing from one side, then attach it to this top piece here like this. Make sure you push it right up to that edge and line up the fold line with the edge of that side of the hexagon. Then remove the tape backing from the other end and attach this end to the second piece. And pay close attention to where I'm attaching it because we want this second piece to mirror the top piece. And again line up that fold line and press down. And the next strip is going to attach this corner here like this. This is hard to describe in words, so hopefully you are able to follow along visually. And the other end will attach to the bottom piece like this. Notice again they are mirrors of each other. Now attach your third strip here like this. And then your fourth and final strip like this. And this is our spine. These sides are where we'll be attaching our panels. So next we're going to cover each of these sides with tape. Each panel is going to be attached like this, which means there's going to be some pull here. So I'm going to put my tape closer to this bottom half of this side. And then do the same with the other five sides. And now repeat this with the sides on the bottom. And now the spine is ready for our panels, so let's go back to the panels. Once these have dried completely, you're going to take each one and fold up the two tabs like this. Then give the center of the panels a nice curve. I find a good method is to pull it between two fingers like this, and just repeat this until the curve remains. And there's a nice soft curve, so let's do the same with the rest of the panels. And next we're going to attach these to the spine. Take your spine and remove the tape from one of the top sides, and also from the corresponding bottom side. Then take one panel and attach it to the top and bottom. The rectangle panels should match pretty closely. And for this knot design, it's not important because there's no right way up. But remember, if your panel has an image on it like the dragon, keep in mind the bottom of the lantern is where those frills are. Then work your way around the spine. 
I'm going to stagger my knot and dragon panels so the next panel will be a dragon. And now we've come to the last panel. Notice these panels overlap a bit, so for a consistent look, I like to pull all my dragon panels so that they're sitting on top of the knot panels. And this is just a matter of shimmying the edges to overlap. And there we go. Now let's add the accents. These accents are going to attach with tape, so once again place a piece of tape on each side of the hexagon. And do the same with the bottom part. Now remember these shortened pieces, I'm going to show you how to attach them first. Starting with the piece that has the tabs on both ends, make all the vertical folds down and away from you. And then your horizontal folds will fold up and towards you. And do the same with the second piece. Next, remove tape from one side, then starting with this piece with the two tabs, attach the first panel from the left tab like this. Then work your way around. Now when you get to the small tab on the end, press it down first, then attach another piece of tape over the tab. Then take your second piece and attach it right on top like this. And work your way to the end. Now when you get here to the last part, remove your tape cover and press down that first tab first. Then place another piece of tape on top of the tab and press down the last part to overlap. And that's it. Now let me show you how to attach the accent piece when it's one long single piece. So position your piece like this with the tab on your left and make all your vertical folds down and away from you. Then 
Then, just like before, all your horizontal folds will fold up and towards you. Now to attach it, remove a piece of tape from any side and start by attaching that first panel that's to the left of the small tab like this. Then work your way around. Now you may notice that your accent piece is slightly bigger than the sides on this lantern. This is by design so that it can accommodate paper thicknesses. Okay, when you get to the last panel, just like before, press down the small tab first, add a piece of tape on top, then press down your last panel. And now you have your accents attached. Now the next step is optional. I'm going to glue these parts down onto the lantern just so they sit flush. Feel free to skip this part. And all I'm doing is just brushing a little glue on the underside and pressing them down. And the final step is to attach the tassel. This is the string I've designed for the tassel to hang on to. If you've made my other lanterns, you'll be familiar with it. For this lantern, I'm going with a red string and gold tassels. And I've cut out two tassels here. You really only need one, but since my gold paper is thin, I thought it'd be fun to just glue two tassels together and have the frills hang loose. So I'm just placing glue on these top parts, nothing too precise. Then attach the two tassels together. Then you can take your fingers and just pull the frills apart like this. And now for the string, we're going to create a hairpin fold at both ends. So starting at one end, count six circles in. And after the sixth circle, make a fold. Then another fold on the other side of what will be your seventh circle. And here's the hairpin. Now on the other side, do the same, but fold in the opposite direction. So again, count six circles, fold, and fold again, and you should end up with this backward Z shape. Now you're going to take one end and loop it through this bottom loop, and then we're going to close this together like this. So let's do that. Loop through, then place some glue on the last couple circles and attach it to the other side. And just make sure you're attaching it in the right spot so that fold stays at 90 degrees. And I'll show you on this end what I mean by that. So here, if I attach it like this, you can see that fold is at an angle. So you want to make sure it's like this, almost like a flat table. And now this end will hold our tassel. So loop your tassel through, then some glue on the last few circles and press together. and notice the nice right angle on that hairpin end. And that's it for the lantern assembly. Lastly, I'll show you how to tie string for hanging your lantern. 
you can use any string. Here I'm using nylon string and you just loop it through that top loop. And rather than tie the knot right up to the loop, I'm placing my finger in the string here to create a loop. Then I make three knots. And this is just so the string doesn't rip into my paper. And that's it. Your lantern is ready to hang. I hope you guys enjoy this one. I know it was a long one. I hope it was helpful. Thanks so much for all your support.